Hi everyone, uh, today I will present uh, the result of a retrospective analysis of HIV positive female sex worker in Myanmar. As Andrea said, in Myanmar, uh, HIV is concentrated in uh, people who inject drugs, men who have sex with men, and female sex workers. Uh, the general, the prevalence of the general population is point five percent, whereas it is 6.3 percent in female sex workers. In Myanmar, a condom use program was first piloted in 2001 and has recently uh, been replaced by a more comprehensive program which now includes commercial sex outside of brothels and also uh, include men who, uh, who have sex with men. However, the prevalence of condom use in sex worker remains unclear. HIV in, f in female sex worker in Southeast Asia context is understudied. There is uh, little published literature, and the literature available mostly focus on prevention rather than clinical needs of infected female sex worker and uh, their outcomes. And one of the main important point is that analys analysis and HIV prevention and care effort are often biased due in part by the common misconception of sex worker. People assume that sex workers are only adult women in brothels and karaoke parlor, although research is showing that street-based and informal sex work is also common and that men and children could also be engaged in sex work. A second point is that usually, like it is in the current reporting system of the MOH in, in MSF, when cases are, of HIV are recorded, you can only select one category of high-risk behavior. You're either a sex worker or, um, or injection drug user, but you cannot report both, although it is known that often there are over, overlapping risk factors. MSF OCA has been treating HIV in Myanmar since 2002, and now has a cohort of about 32,000 HIV-positive patients on ART. We have nine clinics in three states, Shan, Kachin, and Yangon, and we were one of the first NGOs to focus on Irish group with uh, specialized areas and counseling. We have now reduced our outreach and prevention activities uh, now that other actors are present in Myanmar. So since there's very few data available regarding HIV positive sex workers in Myanmar, our objectives are to describe clinical, virological, and immunological characteristics and outcomes of the HIV positive female sex worker seen in MSF clinics. <clears throat> we did a retrospective court analysis using routinely collected medical data from FUSHA database. We looked at all HIV patients admitted between 2002 and 2015 in Shan Kachin and Yangon projects, and we used a um, <clears throat> sorry, the sex work was self-reported and defined as ever having sold sex. We analyzed a cohort of adult female sex worker and compared their characteristic with adult female who did not report sex, s sex work. <clears throat> and before we look at the result, I would like to show you where our cohort of uh, adult female is taken from. So between 2002 and 2015, we had a cumulative cohort of 57,193 HIV-positive patients of both genders and all age groups. And of those, uh, about 1% reported having ever, uh, ever having sold sex, of which 41 were males and 51 were under 18 years old. And in order to have more similar population to which compared to sex workers, outcome, we limited our analysis to female age over um, 18 years old and over, which gives us a cohort of 22,296 HIV positive adult females, of which 588 were sex workers. And if we look now and we compare female sex worker to non-sex workers, we can see that Female sex worker are younger at diagnosis, uh, with a median age of 26 years old, compared to 32 years old in non-sex worker. They have a similar baseline CD4 and a similar immunosuppression status at first visit. However, uh, female sex worker had greater odds to be lost to follow up before ART initiation, with 34% 
uh, loss to follow up compared to 18% in not sex worker. If we now look at uh, those who initiated ART, we can see that although female sex worker had lower odds to be retained in care after one year uh, on ART, the retention and care of sex worker was still very high at, with a proportion of 83%. And of those who are currently under care, uh, female sex worker had greater odds to be on second line ARV compared to non-sex worker with 9% of female sex worker on second line compared to 5% in non-sex workers. And overall, female sex worker were more likely to be lost to follow up po uh, pre or post ART, but the majority of those uh, lost to follow up were before uh, in ART initiation. It was 70% of the lost to follow up that happened before ART initiation. Uh, of course, one of the main limitation in our study is that we think that sex work is most likely underreported. There's, uh, it can be underreported for various reasons, such as stigma and the fact that it's self-reported data, and but also due to staff bias, who, like I briefly uh, mentioned earlier, they're more likely to ask about sex work if uh, the patient fits their preconceived idea of who is a sex worker. And we think that, all, however, our main, um, our biggest reason for underreporting is the way that the data was collected and recorded. So like I mentioned earlier, only one high-risk behavior can be recorded in the current system that we have. And this information was also only asked at registration. And this is something that we are changing now. Uh, in conclusion, we recommend that in order to increase uptake of HIV services and retention in care in female sex worker, we should first better identify sex worker patient by sensitizing healthcare providers and by improving the data collection and recording of high-risk groups, uh, which we are in the process of doing, like I said. And we need uh, also to study a little bit more our, our core to better understand adherence, mobility, reason for loss to follow up, and outcomes in sex worker. Uh, and all this could help us uh, adjust our service delivery model to their specific needs um, which is, it could be um, privacy, flexible opening hours, and tailored counseling. Secondly, we should prioritize sex worker for test and treat since they are more likely to be lost to follow up before ART initiation. And we see that once on ART, the retention in care is, is still very good. And finally, we recommend routine viral load testing um, to improve early diagnosis of virological failure. MSF has started this year, and the MOH will start uh, with the ne next global fund round. Thank you very much, and I want to thank everyone in Myanmar who probably could not uh, be with us tonight today because of the low bandwidth in Myanmar. Thank you.